Welcome to the network coding lecture um, with the continuation about our um, advanced RNC um, topics. As I said last time, um, I would like to go through a little bit about some topics that are important, um, maybe some effects that people considered to be maybe limiting network coding, and one of them was called heterogeneous packets, right, or heterogeneous packet length. And the idea is, if you look at the packets, so far we just said there are some packets P1 to PG, and um, if we take the packets, we have a coding matrix and we get the coded packets. But the length of the packets, of the original packets, is important because the coded packets will all have the same length. And this will be the length of the maximum um, length of the, no, uh, of the packets out of the generation. And the question is, how do we deal with that? So here you see um, the problem. If you have P1, P2, P3, and PG, what you can do is you just fill in some paddings, right? The maximum packet length is here P2. And when you have then the, um, the packets, you can create the coded packets, you put the encoding vector. But now there's a lot of overhead. It's not only the little um, encoding vector that we sometimes are looking into. Here you see the padding that is then also transmitted. And the question is, can we now um, somehow reduce this padding or can we reduce this inefficiency somehow? Good. And there are different options that um, our students, they looked into that. For example, you could say, I'm chop and code, right? Chop and code means that you just say, I have a fra fragmentation size and I will just go down here and just cut the bigger packets into smaller pieces so that P1, for example, has two parts, P1 dash and P1 two dash, and then um, still there's something missing, but now you do only the padding for that. So in, the, in this case, it seems that only every second packet needs a little bit of padding, and the padding um, is also less than in the example before. So just by defining a fragmentation size, you will then um, maybe reduce the padding in that. But what you also do is you're increasing now the generation size virtually with that, okay? So what is now interesting is, is this, um, this chop and code approach also for free or do I need some information in the packets to say where do they end, where they stop, what is padding, et cetera, pp? Um, we did not assume it here, but let's assume this to be very simple. The other one is something called bundle and code, where you just say, okay, I will try to fill in the holes was something like, oh, here, let's take P3 that fits exactly into the padding zone of P1, right? And um, doing that, you will see, oh, this is very nice. There's only a little bit of, of overhead. The other one is a chop and bundle code, so you combine the two, right? This means um, you will just say, okay, I will go down a little bit and then find an optimal fragmentation size in order to minimize the amount of padding that you have here. And last but not least, you can even go for chain and chop, which means you just put the packets one after another and you have different ways of creating packets out of it. So you just say, I have a fragmentation size, let's say of 500 byte, and whenever this is allowed, I will just um, cut it and then next one, next one, next one. What you will see in this case, only in the end you will have a little bit of padding for the last packet. There's another issue, it's not just the, the padding. What you see here, for example, if you do bundle and code and you move packet three up here, this means that you need all the packets, P1 to PG, to see them in order to do the up optimal placement. So if you think about latency, it's not a good idea to do something like that, right? So the bundle and code, and also chop bundle and code, means I need to see all G packets. Everything that we did before, hmm, not necessarily a nice thing. Um, the chop and code would still work. Um, you would just operate on the packets as they come in, as, say, as also chain and chop has to do with this, right? So then you will say, how would this look in a real internet traffic, right? We just assumed some examples. What we did is um, we went to a um, database and we looked into different packet sizes and you, uh, you see that they're very small packets, mediocre packets here in the middle and then the large MTU size of 1,500. 
The smaller ones here are, um, are the acknowledgements of TCP. But if you take this, um, this kind of um, stream and database and look into the packet size and randomly just choose them from there without having a real trace, then you can look what is the total data that has to be sent over the fragmentation size, right? So this is what you would need if it's uncoded, the red one. And you can never be better than that, right? It's an unreliable thing, but it's, this is the minimum amount you would send. If you now would say, I do the code simple, and I would then go for the maximum packet size over here, then I would increase it from, let's say, 15,000 to 30,000. So there's a 3 dB um, penalty in doing the coding in a stupid way. And then you see the different ways, like chop and code, just to remember chop and code here on the left, uh, uppercase, you will see that there is something like this curve, which means based on the fragmentation size, this will be minimizing or optimizing. So if you go too close to the end, then you can even make it worse. But then if you open up a little bit, it, it becomes better, better, and the minimal point, I would say, is somewhere here. Okay, then you know the optimal fragmentation size is 380. This comes from the fact that you have here in this cumulative density function a little bit uh, a jump. Here are some, I think it's SMPT packets that are in this area. Good. If you then take um, um, chop bundle encode, um, then you um, have the, the yellow one down here. The chain chop encode is similar to that. It looks very good down here as well, and um, it really approaches also the, the, the limit of the uncoded case. Still, you see there's a, a small delta, and this delta comes from the encoding vector. It's not the padding or whatever, right? So there is something uh, what you can do. Good. So um, we have more of these uh, packet size comparison. Um, where you see the total amount of data or fragment size. I will not go into detail, just for the completeness if you want to look into that. And um, there are um, also internet data from KIDAR that we used for different field sizes now and for generation sizes, really to understand what kind of these heterogeneous packets are doing. Now, this is just taking it from the database and get a probability function. If you have this over time, you can see something like this, right? Um, sometimes you're optimizing it, then something happens to the stream and you're increasing it. Sometimes um, it's going down because the packets are going down. Question is how the different approaches will um, adapt to that. So the code simple would say, okay, let's take a generation of packets and the worst packet is then identifying what it would look like, right? It's always then the, the maximum here. And if you have the optimal value chop and code, that's the, the, red, the blue one, and uncoded is then the, um, the, uh, the red is the uncoded, which is the lower bound. And with the blue one, we are quite close to it. So this is a, a way how we adapt over time to that. Okay, so this is something in network coding where we say um, that might be um, a limited factor, but there are solutions for that, right? As people maybe in the beginning said, oh, it's a nice approach, but it's very complex. We showed them it's not so complex. They said, can you even deal with the heterogeneous packet size? Yes, we can do this, as you have seen here. And whenever you have a question, just come to us. Maybe um, there is a solution to your problem already.